let's just take a little bit of time to think about the autonomic nervous system. So within your body, you have a nervous system, a network of nerves that flow out essentially from the brain, the brain stem and the spinal cord out um, branching and splitting and branching and splitting out to the various different organs and tissues of your body. And along those nerve pathways, electrical impulses, electrical signals can be sent to control whatever is at the end. So at the end, there will be various different organs. So the heart, for example, and the lungs and so on, the muscles too. And so when an electrical signal is sent along these pathways, the body is able to control what's going on in the organ or organs at the other end. And information is constantly being sent to and from this nervous system. And that's how we respond to our environment. That's how we respond if the environment is very hot or cold, or if the environment is full of danger, or if we experience pain, or in our case, if we need to exercise, if we need to run or jump or throw or kick or whatever it might be. Our nervous system enables us to get our, the various different organs of our body working in order to meet the demands of the environment, in order to meet the demands of the exercise. And we talk about the nervous system, or this part of the nervous system, as being an autonomic, or the autonomic nervous system. And that word comes from two Greek words, which um, auto means self, and nomic is to do with law or rules or regulation. And it simply means self-regulating, or ruling itself. And what it means is that the nervous system does its own thing. It's in charge of itself. It just gets on and does its job without us having to think about or tell it what to do. We don't have to think about increasing our heart rate, for example, when we're stressed. It just gets on and does it. So autonomic simply means that it works without conscious control. And our autonomic nervous system has two sides to it, two elements that work in conjunction with one another. We have the sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system's role is to excite the body. So to speed things up, um, maybe to increase your heart rate, for example, and we'll look at more examples in a moment. The sympathetic nervous system speeds things up, gets the body going, prepares the body to meet the demands of the environment, whatever they might be, or in our case, the demands of exercise. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, essentially does the opposite job. It calms things down. It brings things back down to a resting level. So we have the sympathetic nervous system, which excites the body, um, increases uh, things like blood pressure and heart rate and so on. And we typically refer to that as a fight or flight response, a fight or flight response. That is the body is prepared for action. The component part, the other component part of the autonomic nervous system um, that works alongside the sympathetic nervous system is the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's the part that calms things down, um, decreases heart rate, for example. And we sometimes refer to this system um, as the rest and digest system. So we've got fight or flight, that's the sympathetic system, and we've got rest and digest. That's the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, I've just put a little picture there of a parachute just to remind us that it's the parasympathetic nervous system that brings us back down again, just like a parachute does. Parachute, parasympathetic, brings us back down again. So what is it that actually triggers the sympathetic nervous system? What is it that kicks this system in and excites the body? Well, very simply, it's stress. And even actually the anticipation of upcoming stress. And that stress can take a whole bunch of forms. It could be pain. It could be danger. It could be excitement. It could be exercise. Whatever the stressor is, the body essentially responds in the same way. The sympathetic nervous system kicks in. And there are several responses that we need to know um, that happen to the body when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in, when the sympathetic nervous system starts to excite the body. Here's the first one. First of all, 
we secrete adrenaline and noradrenaline. Now, in the States, this would be referred to as epinephrine and norepinephrine, but it's the same thing. And this is a hormone which is secreted by the, um, by the adrenal glands, which are close to the kidneys. And it's adrenaline uh, that you'll have heard of that's responsible for creating the fight or flight response. And it will do things like, for example, dilating your pupils and your eyes so that you can take in more light, so you can see more clearly, so that you're ready and prepared to respond to any changes in the external environment. You can see more clearly and you're taking in that information more efficiently. Another thing that adrenaline does when it's released into the bloodstream is it causes the release of sugars into the blood. Now we know that's a helpful thing because once the sugar is released into the blood, it can be then carried to where it's needed uh, for glycolysis to be broken down and used to provide energy. So we get an energy rush, a sugar rush, if you like. A second response is the increase in heart rate. And the benefit of an increase in heart rate is that we can increase our cardiac output. So the cardiac output, you'll know, of course, is the total volume of blood that's ejected from the heart in one minute. If we beat, if the heart beats faster, more frequently, the cardiac output goes up. And that has the knock-on benefits of supplying more blood and therefore more oxygen and more relevant nutrients. The third response is an increase in blood pressure. Um, and so as blood pressure is increased, we find that blood flow is sped up. If you think about passing water through a tube, if you constrict that tube, um, the water, if you've got the same amount of water passing through, if you constrict that tube, let's say um, a, a garden hose and the water's passing through, if you put your thumb over the end of it to increase the pressure, what happens to the speed of the flow of that water? It speeds up. The same is true with blood. So we speed up blood flow by increasing the blood pressure. And so again, speeding up the blood flow means a faster supply of oxygen, a faster supply of the nutrients that are necessary for the creation of energy in the working muscles. Another thing, uh, fourthly, that the sympathetic nervous system does is increases the contractile force of cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle is heart muscle. Contractile force simply means how hard it contracts when it contracts. So if when the heart contracts, it contracts more forcefully, each time that happens, we're going to increase the amount of blood that's ejected from the heart each time it beats. And that's stroke volume. So we can increase our stroke volume. And again, that will have the knock on effect of increasing blood flow. Finally, for the sympathetic nervous system, um, this system also stimulates both vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Um, and this is beneficial because vasoconstriction and vasodilation allows the body to determine where blood flows to. So we can redirect blood flow away from the organs where we don't need blood so much at the moment and towards where it is needed, towards the working muscles um, and away, for example, from the gut where it's not needed for the time being. And of course, vasoconstriction and vasodilation are also really helpful in maintaining body temperature, which we call thermoregulation. What about the parasympathetic nervous system? Well, there are a small handful of responses that essentially um, bring those five that we've just looked at from the sympathetic nervous system, bring those back down to resting levels. And the three key ones that we really should know are that the parasympathetic nervous system calms down or decreases the heart rate. So the heart slows down in terms of its beats per minute. It just slows down. It goes back to resting eventually. Blood pressure comes down. And as a result, cardiac output, the total volume of blood pumped out in a minute, also starts to come back down to a resting level. So what are the benefits of these things? Essentially, the parasympathetic nervous system is there to reduce the amount of time that we spend in a stressful state. Because you might think, well, the, all those things on the, last, um, on the last list, the sympathetic, they're all great. Why don't we just do that all the time? Why don't we just have our pupils dilated all the time? Why don't we just have a, our cardiac output high all the time? Then we'll be ready for action no, no matter what at any given moment. The problem is, in that stressful state, um, the body 
ends up getting into a state of chronic stress. And there are very many negative symptoms of chronic stress. There's a, there's a huge long list, I've just put a few here. Arterial hardening, type 2 diabetes, dopamine insensitivity. Dopamine is a, a pleasure sensor uh, in the brain. And if you become insensitive to it, you struggle to feel pleasure. That's not a good thing. Impairment of new memory creation, erectile dysfunction, depression, and the list goes on and on. So we want to spend as little time as possible in a state of stress because we don't want to suffer the symptoms of chronic stress. So the parasympathetic nervous system is really important to bring us back down, um, like that parachute we've got there in the corner, to bring us back down onto the level, back down to resting levels, heart rate down, blood pressure down, uh, and so on. So the two systems work closely together. Um, they're not opposite to one another, not antagonistic. They work in conjunction with one another. That's it for the autonomic nervous system. Thanks for watching.